Right, hi everyone, as if you haven't had enough of the Queen recently. Um, I'd hoped to get this out during the Jubilee weekend, but uh, didn't get as far as that. But uh, this is a short little video in which I'm showing the finished picture of the Queen and Prince Charles and how I put it together into one of the double page spreads for the Squiggly Peter book. Okay, I'm trying to keep this as short as possible. There's a longer version, um, I'll give a link to that as well, a longer version showing the whole painting of the Queen, uh, if you're interested. Um, anyway, keep it short, hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to sign up for the newsletter at www.squigglypeat.co.uk. Thanks very much. Bye. Uh, there's more <laughs> coming right now. OK, so this is where the idea emerges from. Um, <clears throat> I'd already started working up this double page spread. You can perhaps see the gutter down the um, well, it's just off the centre now to the right. Um, and I've got the watercolour painting uh, of the old customs house in there and as you can see Lucy scowling away on the left um, but this was my quick sketchy little scribble I, I had the idea I'd have the Queen poking at that bag of mushy peas and Prince Charles looking on so this was just a quick scribble just to get it to fit on the page. The next stage um, I photocopied it and uh, photocopied that little scribble multiple uh, uh, upsized it to 110% because I like to draw and paint things a little bit larger than they'll finish up on the page. <clears throat> and then um, put it on a light box and basically drew on top of that scribble. Um, the scribble just gave me the position of the characters, uh, but this is where I really developed the characters. The face of the Queen and Prince Charles there and the Queen looking distastefully at these washy peas. Oh, they look a bit manky, she says. Okay, the next stage in the process is inking over the pencil lines. Um, so here I've gone over it with Indian ink and a fountain pen uh, dipped in that ink. Um, there's more details on this elsewhere in the video, I think. Um, and then you rub out the pencil lines and you're ready to paint. It's a bit like colour by numbers. Okay, so the next stage of this is to do the watercolour painting itself. And there's a longer video that goes with this, um, which I'll link to below. And um, th this is the finished watercolour, basically. As you can see, I've replicated the gold, whitey gold dress that the Queen's wearing, lovely purple crown, and Prince Charles looking on in dismay. And there's a little close-up, so you can see it a little bit more clearly. Now, I haven't painted the peas in the background, and I'm going to be doing that in a minute in this video. Um, I didn't want to mess up this lovely little bit of artwork, so I've just left it like that. Next stage is to scan it in and pop it into Photoshop and do all the other magic. Okay, in this little demo, we're going to give Her Majesty the Queen some mushy peas to poke. Here we go. Right, first of all, um, I've already done this painting uh, in a previous video, or previous part of this video, and um, all that's needed to complete the picture is the mushy peas in the background. She's prodding, going, oh, what do I want to do with them mushy peas? Adapt it very slightly. So I'm just going to trace that. Now I've got this A4 sized white board, as they call it, uh, light board, as they call it these days. It's very thin, pops on your desk, very convenient, and you can just about see enough through it to trace things, some things better than others. This is the machine that's eaten the mushy peas, you see. Um, and its belly is full of... And that's the contours of the machine's belly there. So, very simple, just a little pencil sketch. And as everything, I put the date on it. I'm actually doing this a couple of days after the weekend. Uh, I'd hoped to get this out for the weekend, but didn't get that far. How easy this is. I may mess this up and have to start all over again, but let's see. Now, we're going to have the belly of the machine up here, which is steel plates. I'm not going to draw every little bit of them, but just to give the impression. And some rivets. Like this. And then there's the big bag. So you see, you can do some nice big swoopy shapes with that. 
and you're not going to get horrible scratchy effects. I'm just going to do a few little details of the peas in the foreground. And maybe have it glooping around in the background there. And that, as they say, is that. Okay, that's as much ink as I need to do for this little piece because this is very short. Right, let's get some colour in, shall we? I'm going to get my water. I'll try and get this all in screen so you can see what I'm doing without knocking over the water, getting into my computer hard drive, destroying everything I've done for the last 50 years. Now, um, I usually designate bits of my mixing palettes here to, to specific colours, and up here is where I do my greens. You may wonder why these these watercolour pans are so worn out. There's hardly anything left of them. Um, well, I've got a little game going on myself. I'm sort of trying to see if I can get to the end of the Squiggly Peak book before these run out. Um, I've got spares in the drawer ready to go anyway. But um, I want to see how much I, how long I can make these last. I'm not stingy or anything, just interested. So I've got here lemon green, uh, sorry, lemon yellow, a bit of Windsor yellow. I think Windsor call it that themselves because that's just the yellow they make, which is a little bit more rich. The lemon is yellow, very lemon. Green here, I should have used a bigger brush, but never mind. This is just a sort of base layer. I'm going to leave a little bit of light and lightness in there. A little bit of olive green. That sap green has nearly had it, actually. Um, so while it's still wet, I'm going to add wet paint into wet paint, a technique they call wet into wet. And um, I'm sure you're familiar with this because if anyone's ever tried doing watercolours, that's what you spend half your time doing until you realise you don't do it all the time. That's a good way to ruin perfectly good pictures. But in this case, I do want, I do want it because I'm want like a nondescript smudging of the thing. I'm keeping it nice and round, keeping the shapes nice and round, so we get this sort of gloopy, messy sort of thing. Mix up some darker green, so I'm going darker and darker all the time, to add in some detail of the peas in the foreground. Well, these are monster peas, if you like. But can you see the way it's sort of bleeding away? And that's fine because these aren't supposed to be individual peas, but they're just forming the sort of background, if you like. You know, I'm not going to paint every individual pea. That would be madness. Although it would be very therapeutic, I think. But what will one do with them peas, said the Queen. They are starting to look a bit manky. Oh, I haven't a clue, mumbled Pete, going red, as he buried his face in his hanky. So... Pete's built this machine to manage to gather up all these peas, but he hasn't got a clue what he's going to do with them. Fortunately, the heroine of the story, Lucy, knows exactly what to do. Um, and as always, she saves the day. Jack and Peter might have fun bumbling around and being idiots and stuff, but uh, Lucy's really the clever one. OK, right, I'm going to fast forward this a little bit. Um, because obviously I've got to wait for some of this to dry. It's all getting a bit blurry. So uh, if you hold on, we're going to buckle your seat belts. We're going to go a bit faster. OK, so <clears throat> there's our little bit of illustration nearly finished. Now, the last thing I'm going to do, as you can see, that just looks like this, like the mushy peas, which are just green and like peas, as you can see down here. Um, but I need to give the effect of this polythene plastic bag, transparent bag, the monster's got the monster, the hoover, the vacuum, the machine, whatever it is. So here we are, see, there's the trans transparent bag. Well, I've created transparency in this. This looks like a, a sort of adapted giant Coke bottle or something like that. Anyway, so this is the bag that the machine uh, Squiggly Pete designed. Here we are, there's another picture of it. You see the big bag at the end? Uh, he designed that so it sucks up the mushy peas into that machine, collects them in the bag at the end. OK, so I've got to give the effect of this being that translucent, that transparent bag. Now, I don't know how successful this is going to be, and maybe I should test this on a piece of uh, rough paper. Here we go. I keep bits and pieces like this around just to test this sort of business. 
Something. Okay, so oops, turn the light box on there again. It's going a bit mad this one, isn't it? So there's my blue power top here. It's got a little tinge of purple in it, but I don't think that's going to hurt today. So there we go. And to make it look like a plastic bag, I'm just going to sort of wash the colour right over it like this. Just leave some sort of areas to give the effect of shine. And that's it. Not brilliant, but uh, it's okay. I'm trying to do this quickly because these videos have all got very long. So that's why I'm going so quickly. Anyway, there we go. There's our paint and it's going to go over there, over there, some lighty bits there. So let's go. There. With watercolour you've got to act quickly sometimes. Well, all the time actually. Not quite, ex not quite as I wanted it, but it'll do. To get the effect I'm trying to produce here, sort of effect of transparency. Like a big plastic bag. To be honest, I think that's probably it. Sometimes it's best to just leave things alone with watercolour. I've got the shadows on the street here, so that's fine. Light, light box goes on again. Dry that off and then a few more little details of peas and we're done. So here we go. So now, now we'll open up the big double double page spread that I'm working on. Here it is. And I've just isolated the Queen and Prince Charles. So we literally drag and drop her over there. Finish with that window for the minute. Here's our peas. Drag and drop these. Bring Charles and the Queen to the foreground. Save that. And I'm going to save this as another file now. 2A. It's my little numbering system again. I'll explain that one day. Don't need the ruler. Hide that. And now I'm going to label my layers first of all so I can find these easily because I've got hundreds of layers going on here. Move the bleed back up to the top. Okay, now with the Queen, as you can see, superimposed. Hang on a minute, we don't need the date. Now, um, as you can see, we've got a lot going on in this picture. Um, we've got this little crowd of people, Squiggly Pete is drawing down here. We've got Lucy and Jack pulling the boat out. And the watercolour picture here, we've got scribbling going up here. So um, I'm going to make a copy of that. In case I need to come back and redo this. So I'm going to call that P's original size and lock it and save it hidden because we I might need to come back. Same with that one, just going to copy that, call it orange in case I need to come back. So now I've got a copy of those just in case I mess things up. So as I was saying, Here's the peas, so let's get that roughly down to size over here. I'm, I can change the words around. Now, as you can see, the Queen and Charles have turned up with quite a lot of white space going on around them. So I'm just going to select that white space, and here we go, we have problems. Um, as you can see, the mask has gone into the glove because there'll be a little gap there somewhere and the logic of the computer says oh that's white too so let's get in there so i'm just going to have to close that up so what i do is i 
get some colour like that. Get my little brush tool. Make a small join there. There. I think that should fix the problem. And on her coat down here, whoops, the big black line. I can remove that later, I'll show you how to do that. But basically that should fix the problem. Yes. Although there are another couple of places I need to tidy up. So I'm just going to uh, get my lasso tool and remove that bit of Charles's coat there because I want all the detail in that. Um, same thing over here and I think the rest of it is okay apart from this little bit of crown up here where I want the original colour in there. Okay, so having selected all that select the inverse, copy and paste and we've got the Queen and Prince Charles again. Now I can get rid of that one and here we have the Queen. I've got a little bit of paper hanging around up there so let's just delete that and there we have the Queen prodding the peas. Simple as that. Now they're still full size so I'm going to save it as 2B now and then I can mess around with the size of the Queen and Prince Charles. There we go. So there you are. You can see how the how the page is put together. I think I'm going to have to shrink that down a little bit because we've got too much going on up here and down here. That side's fine but it all needs balancing up so what I'll probably do is shrink this little area down a bit. I've got to remember to leave space for the text you see because at the end of the day it is a book. Uh, the text is fairly important. There's... Anyway, I'll have to play around with this to get this right. But something like that would be interesting, would be useful. I could even make the Queen look a bit smaller because don't forget these pages are quite big. So there we go. What would one do with them peas? Said the Queen. They are starting to look a bit manky. Oh, I haven't a clue, mumbled Pete, going red, as he covered his face with his hanky. Do not worry, said Lucy, ahead of the game. I have got a solution already. We will need a small rocket and plenty of fuel. Squiggly Pete, can you draw when you're ready? So this is where Pete has to draw a rocket. And we'll see what that's all about in the next double page spread. OK, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Bye. And there's our finished picture with the Queen prodding the big bag of mushy peas in Mustin Square. But what would one do with them peas? said the Queen. They are starting to look a bit manky. Oh, I haven't a clue, mumbled Pete, going red as he covered his face with his hanky. And I'm going to add in Pete somewhere around here. And then that'll be that page. Double page spread, more or less done. OK. <laughs>